I told you about an EAP. Now that's a piece of paper that's created to protect kids in an emergency situation. Matt Mangine Jr. was a local high school soccer player who collapsed on the field. This was back in June. His death drove us to take a deeper look at what's in place to protect student athletes across the tri-state. Tonight, Gary Miller looks at the rules that became Kentucky law long before Matt's death. It is an update to our ongoing series, Athletes at Risk. On a 95 degree day in August 2008, a high school football player named Max Gilpin finished running a series of sprints. He collapsed in the football field and died of heat stroke three days later. No one had talked much about heat related injuries before. This is Kentucky State Representative Joni Jenkins. Her district includes Max's high school. We had a family dinner soon after that and they were talking about, you know, the tragedy and that somebody ought to do something. And I'm like, yeah, somebody ought to do something. And they were like, well, why don't you? And I said, well, I don't know enough about this. And he said, if not you, who? Six months after Max's death, Jenkins led the charge to pass House Bill 383. That covers things like overheating and coaches being trained in sports safety. It also mandates that an Athletic Emergency Action Plan, or EAP, is required for all high school athletic departments in Kentucky. It wasn't gonna work if you didn't make it mandatory because uh, it's, it's tough for people to impose a restriction on themselves. And it has to be venue specific. Sports activity may be taking place on school grounds. It may be on a public school grounds. It may be on a private school grounds. It may be in a local park. We couldn't just tie it to the school building. It's not going to be the same everywhere. It can't be. Every facility is different. The plan must include a breakdown of who is in charge, emergency equipment available, and access plans for EMS. So you can't just take it and take it like a paper and grade it. It's got to be, have you looked at everything? New Jersey, North Carolina, and Massachusetts also have laws that include venue-specific athletic EAPs. We spent the last two months trying to better understand Ohio's law around athletic EAPs. This law that was passed in 2014 makes it mandatory for schools to have emergency action plans. But it never specifically states what should happen when the school bell rings and kids head to after-school athletics. When we asked the Ohio Department of Education to clarify how the law extends to the creation of plans for athletic facilities, they said, we believe the athletic facilities you mentioned would meet the definition of a building under the administrator's control. But what about the athletic EAP being venue-specific? What about when there are two venues in the same building, like the main gym and the auxiliary gym? Or the soccer field at a high school versus the football field? The law does not include that. We went to the OHSA handbook to see what it says, but the only mention of EAPs is two paragraphs on page 45, which covers schools' responsibility when holding a contest. The handbook does say that violating the bylaw is a penalty from the executive director. We reached out to former OHSA Executive Director Jerry Snodgrass. He said in his two years at the helm, he never issued any penalties. I think parents of athletes should be given as much information as possible because they don't know what they don't know. I don't think there's any doubt about it. I will leave here saying that, that we saved lives with that bill. In Kentucky, it took a death that received national attention to create that dinner table conversation. Gary Miller, Local 12 News. It's been more than a decade since the mandatory EAP bill went into effect in Kentucky. Local 12 investigates research found during that same time at least three high school athletes have died during sports in Ohio. To learn more about athlete, athletic EAPs, head to athletesatrisk.com.